more testing is becoming available, we are learning about an increase in the U.S. number of coronavirus infections. As of this morning, more than 35,000 people in the United States are reported to be infected. More than 470 people have died. Nearly one in three Americans is under a stay-at-home order to help slow down the spread. On Capitol Hill, more roadblocks over a nearly $2 trillion economic rescue package that could put direct checks into the hands of many Americans. CBS reporter Natalie Brand is at the White House with the very latest. Michelle, leaders of the White House economic team have been in nonstop negotiations since last night with Democratic leaders in the Senate as they try to hammer out this deal. The lawmakers facing extreme time pressure, and we've seen some of the emotion of this situation boil over onto the Senate floor. Ms. Hardy, we don't have time for it. Let me ask you a question. Senators remain in a heated debate over moving forward with passing a nearly $2 trillion coronavirus stimulus package. The American Senator people West. are waiting for us to act today. Yeah, so. because as long as you have the majority 51 votes rule. So the vote, the final vote is going to be on passage whether you have to negotiate or not with us. Democrats will not stop working with our Republican counterparts until we get the job done. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer says he's hopeful a deal can be reached by the end of the day. That includes more guardrails on funding for major corporations and additional resources for health care. The answer from our friends on the other side of the aisle is delay, delay, delay. Senate Republicans are urging colleagues to fast track the legislation as the economic and health impacts of the coronavirus spread. Six members are under self quarantine, including Kentucky's Rand Paul, the first senator to test positive for COVID 19. Meanwhile, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has her own proposal. Any corporation that takes taxpayer dollars must protect their workers' wages and benefits. President Trump has activated the National Guard and signed disaster declarations for Washington State, California, and New York. But some state and city leaders are calling on the White House to step up efforts to compel companies to make more life-saving medical equipment. They're already at max production. They're already working around the clock. And again, we are using the stockpile and FEMA to get resources out to people who need it. Vice President Mike Pence is holding a conference call this afternoon with state governors at FEMA headquarters. And as the human and economic impacts of the situation continue to expand, Senator Dianne Feinstein has sent a new letter to the State Department expressing concern about possible disruptions to the issuing of new H-2A visas for agricultural workers. She says harvesting food is critical to food security, especially during a national emergency. At the White House, I'm Natalie Brand, KPIX 5.